Welcome to Playdate Podcast. The podcast for each episode, we discover a new song made and sent in by a complete stranger. I'm Slow Magic. I'm an anonymous, masked electronic musician. And I'm Dream Angel, creative director, and I make pretty things. Welcome to the show. Welcome. This is our third episode. Number three. How do you feel about that? Me or them? Are you asking the listener or me? I don't... You. I feel great. Me too. I feel like three is a charm, third, three is a crowd, they say. That is what they say. And... We have like a crowd of episodes now. This is our third and final episode. This has been a trilogy. (laughs) That's just a lie. This is like Star Wars. They did three and they stopped People are going to think you're serious. Three Star Wars, then they ended it right where they should have. True. Just like our podcast. That was... I don't know. I feel like people are going to get mad at you for like... For what? Ending the podcast? I agree. I mean, we're ending strong though. (laughs) You mean about Star Trek? Yeah. (laughs) True. I got to go somewhere (laughs) else. Everyone knows the newest Star Wars is are the best. I don't know. I don't know much about Star Wars, but <laughs> please stay listening. But please, please yeah. don't turn off the podcast. So this week, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, just to clarify, like this is not our last episode. True. That was what we like to call in show business a joke. I know, but what if someone did turn it off because you like? Wait, they would just stop before the end. Yeah. Well, what about the big twist? They're like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> well, we have a big twist coming at the end of today's episode <laughs> and the end of our podcast. Trilogy. Yeah. So, um, speaking of podcasts, today's remix of the theme song was by Milo. And we love it. This is an amazing song. I He told me he's going to play it live, which I'm stoked about. And we actually talked to Brett, Milo. Well, he talked to us. <laughs> we asked him a couple questions. So, hey, Brett, take it away. Hey, what's up? This is Milo. Thanks so much for letting me remix your theme song. Congrats on launching the podcast. Super dope. Um, What's something I've been into lately? Um, I would have to say powerlifting um, and just my health in general. Um, Took initiative like last fall. and I've been uh, really enjoying seeing the progress. Um, A song I think everyone should go listen to right now. Um, I listen to a lot of music, but I would say my favorite song right now is probably Tokyo by Blau. I don't know, I just think it's super catchy, but it's like super minimal at the same time. Um, been getting back more into like, more like electronic electronic music versus like indie electronic that I've been listening to for a while now. And uh, other than that, uh, thanks so much for having me on the podcast. Thanks, Brett. And thanks again for doing that remix. It's amazing. Super cool. It's exciting to have different types of Interpretation. Yes, that's the word. Our, I could not song. think of it. It's very cool to see that happening or to hear that happening. We're well, all hearing it. We also checked out that track I never heard from Blau. It's really cool. We're going to drop a little bit of it right here. It's beautiful. Yes, very also, cool. I like the vocals. They're very like calming, I guess. I like that. I also like Tokyo. Me too. That's crazy. We both have that in common. Also, I don't power lift, but I'm proud of you for doing that. I like to do like a little bit of cardio. I like to (laughs) exercise, but I'm not to your level yet. And I, maybe we should go lift some weights together. I'm like not quite sure what power lifting is, but it sounds super impressive. Good job. Yeah. We're proud of you. We are. For real. Also, everyone should go follow Milo right now because he's one of the best producers. His Instagram and his Twitter is Milo Music, which is M-I-E-L-O Music. 
and he's on Spotify, all that under Milo, M-I-E-L-O. So yeah, here we are. Here we are. This is a podcast, if you guys weren't aware. Um, yeah, so, oh, yeah, last week we asked you guys to come up with some names for you guys. <laughs> our listeners. Yeah, for what what to call our listeners. So we have a list here. A couple people had some things. So do you want to read some of these? Let's start off with Milo, who we just heard from. He said Playdaters with an eight. I like that. It's kind of like Skater Boy. True. Like it's got that. Um, we had one from Brew Ja Ha Ha Ha. Or Brew Ha 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 Ha. <laughs> Brew Ja 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 Ja. Okay. <laughs> I like this one. Play Pals. I kind of feel like this is where it's at, but. Play Pals. I like that. Like, what's up, Play Pals? This is playful and it reminds me of PayPal. <laughs> me too. But in a good way. Okay, we'll consider this one. Let, let us know if you're listening. But we have some more. So, okay. um, from John Luke IRL, who we heard from last week. Friend of the show. Friend of the show, Imaginaries. Okay. That's kind of like has to do with my being imaginary. Yeah, I guess. I like that. We've got Agent Johnny Red said Dreamers. Nice. And then we have Aero- Aerody. What did- I can't read your handwriting. <laughs> Oh, I wrote aerodynamic. Oh, uh, aer- aerodynamic plagiations, which okay. I'm, mm, ma- yeah, okay. Well, we're open to any ideas We're open here. to anything. We are leaning towards maybe play pals, but let us know. We're but we still, appreciate, honestly, all the suggestions. Yeah, and we're still on the hunt. Even for, if plagiations kind of scares me. Yeah, we're still looking, so let us know. But really, I appreciated these suggestions. Comment on this podcast. Yes. Any ideas you have for what comment you want to be wherever called. you comment. Call us. <laughs> <laughs> I call mean, us and tell us what your comment was because we don't know where to read it. Or just tweet <laughs> Twitter at us on Twitter. Which is at Playdate. Same with our Instagram. You could tell us there it's too. It's actually at Playdate Pod. True. I- <laughs> <laughs> this is our third show, but we're getting there. So. So once again, thank you to everybody who submitted a song. We have been... Really enjoying listening to them so much. And if you want to submit a song, you can go to slowmagic.cool slash podcast and you can submit your song there. And we will listen to every one of them. We've actually been listening on our long walks, which has been super awesome. And yeah, it's really fun to listen to everyone's songs. And yeah, just send us whatever you have. But just only send it once. I know I said this the first episode, but just a friendly reminder. Send it once. And we'll listen. Yes. So, yeah. Um, so, I'm drinking some mate tea today with in a pink Rilakkuma mug with a little bit of honey. And I am drinking some green tea with honey in it in my um, mug from Birds and Snowboards. It's like a camping mug, I'd say. It's like... Cause um, that's how it sounds. Fine. I'm from Vermont, so that's we just represent all the time. Mine sounds like this. What happens if we do it together? Cheers. Just like some ASMR already. Cheers, mate. Wow. So that's what we're drinking. That's so interesting. So maybe we should cut that out. <laughs> staying hydrated, like, how are you? I'm doing well. I haven't spoken to you for a whole week since our last podcast I recording. Know. But I feel like I haven't. Spoken to you in like it's, 30 seconds. We're kidding. We're married. We talk a lot. Yeah. But how are you today? I am doing honestly like only kind of okay because one of my legs has been super tight and I've just been like stressing out about that. Your leg is not feeling well and you you just can't like we haven't been able to go out on our walk. It's only been one day but it just feels like very difficult for me. So that's been a little bit difficult. But other than that, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing like, I've got these terrible allergies today. Like We are like <laughs> down. No, I guess. seriously, like, it's just been this huge pressure in my whole like face today. Like, I don't know where the allergies are coming from. But yeah, so that's been my day. So we've just been like, <laughs> we've been like 
floating around our apartment, both like just having like ailments. Today has been like a sick day in two different ways, but like we're, but working, we're working through, through it. it. <laughs> Jinx. Oh my. One, two, three, four. Yo me a Coke. But yeah, so we are doing bad. No, we're doing good, but it sucks when there's things that like, like you just can't escape in your day. It's true. Like I've just been like, my nose has been running. So if I do end up sniffling or sneezing directly under the microphone, then I'm let's sorry. Let's just add that to the ASMR experience. And I apologize. Yes. But other than that, it's been a good week. I feel like um, there was like the holiday in the beginning of the week. Like fall, after Valentine's Day, it was followed by President's Day or whatever. Which was like, I don't know. I feel like music industry or like, I don't know, just having like an independent job. Like, I feel like I'm pretty much my own boss, I guess. Not to brag, but <laughs> sometimes you like, you like want to get working and stuff. And I forgot it was a holiday where like everyone's out of the office. So, I mean, it's nice when sometimes you're like working from home and you feel like you're just doing your own thing. But sometimes, you know, like I want like some emails back. So it was, it's been kind of like a, a short week. For sure. True. But the real question is, what is President's Day? I don't know. It's like a holiday. I guess, do they get it off for school? I don't know. I really have no idea. We're in like fourth grade, so. So we don't know what left <laughs> from right is. Yeah. I think that's about right. I don't know. There's a lot of holidays that I honestly don't know what they are. But I only know that like things are on sale during them. Yeah. Like the only holidays that matter to me are the ones in Animal Crossing. And those are what really matter. Like Toy Day. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Real ones, no. True. But other than all of everything we've just said, something else that we've been doing is we have been getting ready for your upcoming show. Oh, yeah. My show is coming up soon, actually. When you're listening to this, I played yesterday. True. But do you mean the other show? Yeah. Well, I well, just... Well, actually, I was meaning the show that we were about to play, but... Let's just segue right into that. Well, I just actually, while you're listening to this, I just played at Ski DM, which was awesome. I played so well that <laughs> it caused an avalanche, but... Everyone was safe. And they loved it because they were skiing down that avalanche, listening to my Ski DM tunes. We also found out from our last episode, from saying it, we had only read the name, <laughs> but it was Ski DM, like I play on EDM and skiing. So that was sick. For some reason, we've both been calling it Skidum, so. It's hard when you only read something, but that reminds me. Next show I have coming up is March 21st, and that's in San Francisco at Bill Graham Civic Center. And that's with San Holo and Manila Killa. It's going to be unreal. So exciting. I'm going to play some new stuff and some new things. It's going to be awesome. Check it out. Hopefully you're there. We're excited to both see you. And if you want to get tickets to that, you can go to slowmagic.cool. That's my site. That's exciting. That's exciting stuff. It really is. Good job on your set, by the way. Thank you. Proud of you. And now is the very special time for me going on my phone, going onto Google, and looking up fun facts. Cool. That's the name? No, what do we call this segment? Well, we call it different things. Let's just call it Dream Angels Fact Corner. Dream Angels Fact Corner. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Now, these are facts that are in no particular order except the ones that I just chose, I guess, in that order. So that made no sense. Either way, the first one is that the Guinness Book of World Records lists a snowflake 15 inches in diameter and 8 inches thick as measured at Fort something. I can't pronounce that. In Minis... Sorry. I'm off to a bad start. In Montana in 1887, that was the world's largest snowflake ever recorded. 14 inches? 15 inches in diameter and 8 inches thick. Like, I can't even imagine that. That's, like, no longer a snowflake. That is an ice sickle. Right? Or, like, an ice plate. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. You know, like, um, sorry to bring up a scary thing, but icicles are super dangerous. 
Icicles are very dangerous, people. You got to be careful of icicles, especially when you have a big icicle and it gets hot out and the icicle starts to melt. Do not stand underneath them because people get killed. Killed. But what I was trying to say is like, that's a dangerous <laughs> snowflake that could smash a car. I just don't even understand how that even happened in 1887. That's just like. Was that the ice age? <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Cool. Okay. So that was the first one. And then we are going to go to the next one, which is about the largest honeybee on earth. And it's called the Himalayan giant honeybee. And they make honey that has like psychedelic properties. And it's used by people for religious or fun. No, like. Like spiritual. Yes, spiritual. Things. Yes. What's it called? And where do I get it? It is asking for a friend. It is known as mad honey, a reddish sweet goop with psychotropic effects that in small doses are reportedly pleasant. And mad honey makes me kind of nervous though. <laughs> like yes. it makes you mad or like angry. <laughs> it's just I can't even I wonder how big the Himalayan giant honeybee actually is. I should should have looked up that. True. I was more focused on the psychedelic honey, but like is that a band that sent us a song, Psychedelic yeah, Honeybee? Exactly. That's awesome. That, you've got some big facts today. But it's okay, so they get this honey by pollinating a dangerous flower whose name I cannot pronounce. It's like the Venus bee trap. Sure, why not? <laughs> that is a dangerous game they're playing. True. That's sick. Okay, my next fact is nothing to do with the size of anything. And it is in South Korea, if you need to report a spy, you dial 113. It's one of their emergency numbers. That's fun. I know, right? I Wait. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. If you're listening out there and you needed that info. I just, I, I should look more into that, but it kind of scares me. The next one and my last one. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So you're like, this isn't like 911. This is like very specific. But yeah, it's like listed within the emergency numbers. Like there's a number so, for fire, there's a number for police, and then there's a number for wow. reporting a spy. Well, that's legit because like here we have one number and I've heard a lot of stories about that number not really working very well. That's true, but I feel like if you look a little bit deeper into it, there are numbers for our fire departments, but no one knows like the seven digit number for their fire station. I feel like you just Or for yell. their significant significant other you just yell fire out the window apparently or if there's like a cat in a tree you yell fire is that just like an american thing if anybody else is out there listening from a different country is there like this idea that if there's a cat stuck up in a tree the fire department will come and get it i hope so me too well, that's cool that is an interesting one okay my last one definitely not my favorite one but i found it to be funny for some reason so a duel among three people in which players can fire at one another and attempt to eliminate them while surviving themselves is called a truel. Truel? Yeah. <laughs> T-R-U-E-L. Are they shooting in a circle? I don't quite know. Do they have two guns each? I That's crazy. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't have to know. We're just kind of wondering here. Well, now I feel like I should have known that. Like, I no, should have no. expected that question. That isn't... That's cool. I mean, okay, if they're like, I feel like there's like a thing in the office where they're all shooting and while well, they're pretending to shoot each other. It reminds me of that because they're like, they all shoot each other at once. I haven't watched that, that Maybe episode Maybe there in a while. was something about a troll. Yeah, that's truly crazy. And I think it's like kind of a newer made word, a troll, but maybe not. Yeah, because there's a lot of duels going on these days. Yeah, if you've ever been a part of a duel or seen a duel, can you just let us know? Because that's an interesting thing in itself. Like a duel. There's a lot of different types of duels. Like I maybe did some drumming duels. That sounds super cool. Or can a you drum go battle. into that? Have you seen the movie Drumline? Only with you one time at a hotel. It's like that, <laughs> only cooler. Wait, have you really been in a drum battle? I mean, I think we tried a little bit in school to like set up two drum sets. But they always ended in a friendly who, way. Who wins? The person who drums the loudest? Whoever breaks their sticks first <laughs> loses. That I don't know. is crazy. I just made that up, but. Well, I believed you. I think that more than a duel, we would just do like co op drumming, play together. Nice. I miss those times. Cool. 
<laughs> so those are my fun facts. And if you have a fun fact that you want to share with me, then please tweet it at us at PlaydatePod on Twitter. And I won't read those, but they must be fun. <laughs> or weird. Or true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the only thing is it has to be true. Or weird. Or but fun. mostly true. <laughs> and a fact, which means it's true. Okay. Awesome. Sick. But those were great facts. Thank, Thank you. you. <gasps> Thank well, you. So my question for you is, which one was your favorite? I like the bees. The bees one was different and that very interesting. Honestly, crazy sounding, like the honey. <laughs> My favorite one would have to be the one about South Korea. Just because, like, I feel like there's so many stories behind that. Like, why did that number come into existence? How, How many, many spies, spies are there, James? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right? Now, tell me. Mm -hmm. What is one thing that you have been into? Oh, one thing I've been into. So, I have been really into this thing. And you might know a little bit about this thing. It's a place. <laughs> it's a little old place that I like to call Trader Joe's. Ooh. You know about this, right? I do. <laughs> of course I do. you do. It's definitely a little place. It is little. And it's become one of my favorite things of all time is Trader Joe's. And honestly, I was first a little skeptical, I have to say. It what? is overwhelming. I, If you go into a Trader Joe's for the first time, just give it a chance. Because if you go in, it's terrifying. Yeah, and if you go in, it's busy. It can be one of the worst places ever. Because <laughs> the reason why it's so busy and people are literally like pushing each other sometimes in there. It's because the food is amazing. <laughs> they have so many good things and it's really cheap. I don't mean to laugh at this, but can you please tell the story of like the most recent time? One of the most recent times we were at Trader Joe's with the baby. Oh. Like just to talk about the uh, craziness that goes on within true, the walls of Trader true. Joe's. So we've been doing pretty much all our grocery shopping at Trader Joe's lately. That's just how much good stuff they have. But like we, we accidentally went like at the wrong time. Like, we went when normal humans go. Well, we thought it wasn't. We were like, oh, 3 o'clock on, like, a Thursday. No one will be there. It was so busy. Or 12 o'clock. It was 12. It was, like, normal human hours, which we're not used to. And, like, so, I don't know. Just, like, literally hectic. I'm, like, looking at the tomato sauce, and I hear this crazy sound, like, a big crash, this crying, this yelling. And so, like, what had happened was, like, this toddler had tipped over a whole cart that had a baby in it. Everyone was okay. There was like five or six moms rushing to like make sure that those babies were fine. All in all, everyone was okay. I didn't see any of this. I was like over picking out Frozen. the raw almond butter that I True. wanted. So, But the reason I'm so into it is because like we've been eating healthy for a long time, right? So right. <laughs> we care a lot about health and and that kind of thing, which can get really expensive and kind of hard because sometimes you have to go to three different stores and it's just really expensive. Um, but Trader Joe's has really good stuff. They always come out with new things that we like to try. Yeah, it like keeps everything more interesting because when you do only eat kind of like not processed foods or you try to like stay with the more like... Clean, organic. Like just like the basic stuff like rice or, you know, just like... Food that hasn't been. I really don't know the wording. You, I hope you understand me. You mean like not processed, all that stuff. Yeah, like nothing weird added. You can get kind of bored, I guess. True. Because you're just like eating the same things over and over again. And garlic can only help things so much at times. So they have like, they try different things, I would say. Or just think of yeah. new ways to do things. Yeah. So that being said, one of my favorite things they have there. Well, I think it'd be both of ours. Is this like... Frozen cauliflower gnocchi. Mm -hmm. I know this sounds like an ad because that's how good everything is there. They are not paying us yet. If they want to, they could. But this gnocchi is so good. It's like um, potato uh, pasta stuff, but it's made with cauliflower too. 
basically, I don't have to say any more about it. It's amazing. and Except there was a recent cauliflower gnocchi shortage. True. That freaked our brains. It was harsh. <laughs> it was very harsh. But they also have this really good vegan cheese. Mozzarella. I love their hash browns. <laughs> they have this really good, I don't know how you say it, bruschetta or bruschetta oh, sauce. Yeah. I say bruschetta. You say bruschetta. Tomato. We Tomato. live in a divided house in that sense, but that's really good. But it's amazing. And honestly... The people who work there are super nice, too. And, like, I feel like if you talk to them a little bit, they're really super nice. So, yeah, I don't know. If you if you ever need food, like, if you're into food, check it out. Trader Joe's. Oh, and their vegan chicken list seasoning. Oh, my, we are an ad. We're not meaning to be an ad. We're just trying to share with you all what we like. From Everyone them. likes food, right? Right, I think. Cool. So use our code Trader Joe. <laughs> just kidding. This is not an ad. This is what I've been into this week. And every week, honestly. Yeah, me too. What about you? Like, what's something you've been into aside from uh, Trader Joe's? Well, I have been into, I feel like, more than one thing. I had a third one, but I can't remember. But I'm going to start with my first one. As you may or may not know, it has been, like, fashion week month, if you will. Like, the four different fashion weeks. And I have been enjoying looking at the pictures from all the collections, but not just like the whole looks, because sometimes the styling of certain looks can just be kind of unrelatable, but like the details, like the head pieces, like headband, not headband, what are they called? Like, I don't even know, like veils, like the whole getups. I've been really into those so much so that I almost thought of making a collage to show you, but I didn't. Is there a particular one or like, well, like place? People. There was, Rodarte had really cool ones. And I'm always kind of, I'm not even kind of, no one cares what I think about Rodarte probably, but either way, I feel like they're making a good, strong accessory head piece moment. They're having a moment with that. I didn't and know any of this was going on, so. We live separate lives, I guess, with our interests. You gotta show me. I will. But also like other details, like the way like, Pants and shoes work together. I'm into that. Like a good pair of pants with a good pair of shoes that were unexpected. Even throw some socks in there. It's all exciting. Oh, and like little 60s dresses. I could go on and on. But I won't. You can. This isn't the place. But my other thing is aromatherapy and like this spray that we've been using, which is lavender. And I don't remember the other stuff that we put in it. But it's this spray from this kit that my dad... Got me all these different essential oils. And I've just been like making this really calming spray that we spray all the time. And so many times throughout the day, I'm like, do you know what would make this situation better? Is that spray. It works. It does work. You spray it all the time too. I see you. I like to spray it before bed uh, around. I don't know why it does. You told me it makes things nice. So I did that. Well, it's like, um, I don't know if anybody knows about these like sleep pillow sprays that are like kind of expensive, I think. I actually don't know how much they cost, but I assume they're expensive. So I was like, I'll just make my own with this new kit. Well, and, it smells yeah. good. It feels nice. I love it. Right? Doesn't it just make everything better? Like if we're meditating, don't you ever just think like this would be so much nicer if we just had like this, some of this being sprayed? It reminds me of like one time we were on a, a plane and they gave us this little spray thing. For your face, I think. And I just loved it. <laughs> it's true. It was like a plane that went to Asia. So it was like a long flight. But yeah, I liked it. I'm I'm uh, into that. I hope you're not missing this one on your face, though, because it's got rubbing alcohol in it. Uh, that's why it tastes so good. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's why it tastes so good. And the reason you put vodka or rubbing alcohol in it is so it doesn't leave weird marks on things. It just dries quickly. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. That's what I've been learning. That's what you've been into. Yeah, but it's got, I'm trying to think, lavender, and then like geranium, which you really like. Then there's one other thing that I just cannot remember. We'll put it in the notes for the show. If I remember. Well, we'll, we'll try to put it in the notes. I'll try it, yeah. Awesome. Cool. That's cool. So we've been into a lot, you've been into a lot this week. But also, wait, I, re I, remember, I remember, I remember, I remember my last one. 
My last one, you're right, I really can't, is like just hearing how everybody has been into these really healthy habits, like going on walks from John Luke or us. We've both been going on walks or powerlifting. And then our guest from last week, she was like, I like going on walks with my dogs. That's true. I feel like we have been getting super good advice from all of our friends on the podcast, and that's awesome. And, like, going on a walk is one thing, but can you imagine going on a walk with a dog? Oh, yeah. I can. (laughs) I've done it. (laughs) Me too, but, like, not here. We've never gone on a walk with a dog here. I like to go on a walk with your your parents' dogs. Well, your dogs, really. Your family dogs, but uh, Bandit in particular. I always have to end up carrying him. Because he just can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you feel like a hero? Yeah. He he looks at me like I'm a hero. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> hey, it's Bandit. True. Bandit Axel, if you're listening, hey, what's up? We miss you. Mom, Dad, when you're listening to this, if you're by the dogs, can you just, like, go back and just play this, like, loudly for them? Yeah. Just to see if they, like, lift their heads up so they know if they can tell that someone's saying their names. Bandit. <laughs> <laughs> Axel. Sorry, sorry. Okay. 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 <laughs> we we made his tail <laughs> wag. His tail is wagging. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, that, <laughs> that was so true to how you say his name like in real life. Okay. <laughs> that that was through the airwaves for my guy Bandit. So that leads us nicely into this week's song. Which, and I will make this make sense. While we mm-hmm. interviewed this week's guests, there was a dog present. And I know this because they told us, and I saw a picture of them getting on the interview. So, this week's song is called Suspended Strings by Message to Bears and Will Sampson. Off their new album, Together, which is called Together. Wow. And we talked to them, and it was an awesome conversation. It was very fun. But first we're going to play the song, and... Then we're gonna talk to him. So here we go.
Do you want to start? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm Will Sampson, and this is. I, and I'm uh, Jerome. I write music under the name Message to Bears, and uh, yeah, we are we are friends <laughs> <laughs> who make music together occasionally. Nice. Well, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Playdate. Thanks for being on here. Thank yeah. you yeah, thanks. for having us. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. How did you guys become friends? Um, I was trying to remember this the other day, but um, all I really could come up with was that you helped off, you helped uh, organize a tour for me. Yeah, I think we've known each other for a really long time. Yeah. I think just through, through mutual friends. Yeah, we're aware of each other's music. Um, nice just from the uh the internet and nice. then we eventually met in um in real life okay awesome you guys are both from the uk right yeah yeah so i've actually been i spent like most of the last 10 years living on like mainland europe so i actually just moved back to the uk about six months ago and so that was when that was really the first time Jerome and I like had the chance to be in a studio together because we'd done a few like collaborations over the years mostly just through file sending but you know that we didn't we just never finished stuff no um (laughs) yeah I, I we love the like the the possibilities when it comes to being being able to send each other um files and music online but being together in the same room is just uh it just makes everything a lot more it just it just works it works way better for us basically yeah i know how that is definitely like sending files back and forth it feels just like email like i don't know it's kind of like less personal for sure yeah totally so you can't really get into the same vibe together yeah, it's it's less organic, which mm. that's something that really stood out to us about your track is it's very organic and calm and it really like jumped out to us. We listen to these mostly while we're making dinner. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> your, your guys' track was just like so it stood out to us in a big way. So I, I wanted to ask you about the sounds. I hear like some organic drums, some guitar strings. Mm-hmm. I, I guess, could you talk more about like the instruments you used and like the organic elements yeah um yeah it's definitely definitely something we were going for like a mix of programmed kind of samples and beats um along with acoustic instruments and some live drums um and we tried to just kind of mix it all together so it did sound um organic so yeah we've got juno to start with don't we that's kind of how it started um the original chords um yeah it's probably it's maybe worth mentioning now you know it's funny that you said the word organic because that track so we just released this like six track ep or like a mini album however you want to call it and the whole thing was recorded in an insanely short amount of time Mm. we're still kind of in shock at how we managed to do it so the whole thing was done in about eight days. Yep. Wow, and nice. like nothing had been like planned or pre-written. Mm, yeah, like, we're very spontaneous. Yeah. Nice. So we had had like quite a few years before that of like file sharing without really ever finishing mm. anything. And then when I moved to Bristol a few months ago, yeah, this was the first time that we could be in the same studio together. And then all of these songs, including this one that we're talking about now, like came out extremely quickly. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was nice. also chill. Like it wasn't like we had this, this big plan to like, to really do anything. It was we felt, felt like we were just kind of hanging out, catching up and we'll just quickly make a tune. Yeah. And we just did that for eight days. Um, so I think maybe that kind of, uh, makes the music sound organic as well because the process was quite organic but like how do you guys start when you're working on a song what is like the first thing you do well this one um so the guitar 
was in like a different tuning for each track and usually it's because I went home and then you I would you muck were around with the tunings <laughs> yeah so then I would come back to the studio fiddling around on the guitar and then find out that it was tuned to something that I didn't know mm. and that actually ended up being really really helpful like finding ideas yeah so we'd, yeah, we'd generally start with some noodling with Will noodling on the guitar um, in a tuning that he wasn't familiar with and then there would just be a point where we'd be like that's that's nice let's just start with that yeah. and then we would just build um from that initial uh, idea essentially yeah so nice. with this track we had the chords on guitar and then just just put them onto the juno right yeah that's what we did yeah and built from that really yeah it's it's all it, it's it felt like quite a blur and like the whole process seems quite hazy to me because it was so like um spontaneous nice. so it's quite yeah. sometimes quite hard to kind of remember exactly how it came together yeah that's cool I just, yeah yeah i just remember the track really came together suddenly when we added this the snare drum mm. like basically the acoustic percussion like suddenly added this movement to the track that was like really lacking before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of That's those awesome. creative moments where, you know, you can be stuck on something for a little bit and then one overdub, in which case, in, in this case rather, the snare just like opened the door to mm. all these other ideas. Cool. So, yeah, it sounds like playing in a band, like I find myself... I make music just by myself a lot. It's it's kind of more like formulaic, but it's cool when you can just like get with a person and just kind of play. It sounds like that's kind of what you guys were doing. Yeah, totally. Awesome. So I have a question. So I think that it's safe to say both your music kind of could be kind of meditative and nice for that. I've been getting really into like meditating and, and music that goes with that. And I guess I had a question if you guys are familiar with this phenomenon. <laughs> so Spotify in particular, there's a lot of these like fake artists popping up that are almost yeah. just like planted. So it sounds like you're a little familiar with that. Yeah. It's really nice and refreshing to speak to some real musicians who work in that genre. And I guess if you had anything to say about that, what would you say? Um, well, about the, uh, the, the, the fraudulent... <laughs> yeah eyes yeah i remember when i heard about that it kind of blew my mind a bit um but i also wasn't like super surprised i was like ah okay um yeah so that being the idea that the like a lot of the top playlists are full of uh artists that spotify has essentially created is that what yeah is that it yeah um yeah it's i've mixed feelings about that it's it feels like somewhat unethical. Yeah. And um totally. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. I feel like I don't know, I guess the kind of music I make isn't exactly that genre, but I feel like it cheapens kind of like the art the artistry that you guys work in to yeah. have like someone with an algorithm say like, well this will work. It's it's like I think it's it's interesting. And the thing that I think is also interesting is I like some of those fake songs, so I'm ashamed to say it, but I, I've noticed the fake ones and gotten rid of those on my playlists. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I guess what, it depends what you mean by fake, because they're still being made by real people, right? Exactly, yeah. That's yeah. the interesting Maybe part. Maybe like the credit part of it. Like... The credit, and I'm, I'm guessing those session musicians, musicians don't get paid what they make. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. I think are. also, I don't know, the thing that, I really have a problem with is yeah I think it's really important the like intention that music's made with and yeah. if the intention behind it is like specifically to get onto a playlist purely for like clicks or streams or whatever then you know that's kind of the opposite of what creativity is about mm. yeah you lose the the soul and the heart behind it yeah, yeah. Um, do you have a part of this song that's your favorite? Hmm. 
the middle bit, the weird middle bit. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I have two actually. I have, yeah, that bit where um, I've got like the weird step filter, and then it's like glitching into mm. the into the end kind of section. But I also absolutely love when that yeah when the snare uh with the brushes come in, yeah, the percussion, and and when the the live basically when the live drums kind of come into it, I, I get quite excited. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the, so that like midsection, the weird glitchy midsection, mm. that's like, I think the only part I had tr- basically tried to do something at home uh, with like my recording software and like didn't <laughs> create what I had intended at all, but came back with this weird like arpeggiated thing. And then we added it to the track, and that's kind mm. of what the result was. So we didn't know yeah. what it was going to sound like, and then it created this really cool, weird, like middle eight, I suppose. Yeah, and because the rest of the track is pretty, I don't know, it, it, just to have that section uh, in it really like takes you away from the kind of the zone that you've been in for like you know two three minutes. And it's uh, something I don't normally do in my own music, like having like a quite a dramatically different little part like that. Yeah, it's um, a nice so cool. slice of weirdness. A nice slice of weirdness, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A little happy accident, sounds like. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically the concept of our podcast um, and part of our integrity is we listen to the songs blindly, so without, you know, even reading the artist. Cool. But... Mm. Uh, Jerome, we noticed by doing a little research, you've had a few things going on, such as your song was in the the notable video game, Life is Strange, and you've done some film scores. Could you talk a bit about maybe how that happened? Uh, Yeah, so, yeah, Life is Strange was really cool to um, uh, be asked to do. Um, I didn't really know anything. I'm, I'm not really, I don't play computer games, so I'm not really familiar with that whole world um but i got the impression that this game was like pretty sweet and uh it obviously has like quite a loyal devote following and um yeah it it just seemed like a cool idea and the rest of the artists involved in the game just like blew my mind so yeah that i just got asked um if i was interested and i was like absolutely and nice yeah so that's great and yeah, film score stuff. I haven't really done that much, to be honest. But um, yeah, I've been asked by a couple of independent um, filmmakers. Um, it's just being reached out to, like on a personal level, nice. and having a little chat. And yeah, it's something I'm really, I want to do a lot more of, for sure. Nice. I think yeah. both of your music would fit that very well, very cinematic. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, Back to the, sorry, just about Life is Strange. Was that a song <laughs> that you had created for the game or was it something you had made already? No, it was made already and they, yeah, they just wanted to license it, um, which I think is the case with most of the songs in that game. I think okay, they were mostly, cool. um, yeah, songs that were already uh, released. Awesome. But, oh yeah, also it, the thing is it's it was used in such a harrowing scene in the game. Mm. Um where if you on the official video for the song all the comments are people just like basically freaking out and crying and saying oh, wow. how could how could this happen and um oh wow yeah and and it was i think wow yeah sorry go ahead I was gonna say, <laughs> no i was just um yeah i didn't expect um the song to have that kind of uh impact in in a video game yeah, so I I'm I haven't played the game. I know it is like a very deep story, but mm. did you have any idea what what like what part of the story your song might be used for? Or was that a complete surprise? Um, no, they didn't really give me any details. Um, no, I just uh, wow. <laughs> I kept on seeing like messages online, and I was like, oh man, something really bad's happened. I think. So oh, I, wow. <laughs> I had to like, I basically had to go, you know how people um, film uh, themse- the, themselves and upload them playing the game? Oh, yeah. And so I was able to find the scene 
um, and that was the only way I like could really work out what happened. Um, I won't say exactly what happened because it might be a, yeah. a spoiler of some sort. Okay. I'll have to play the game. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you guys work together, which can be like kind of a difficult process. Do you guys have any advice or anything for people who do work together? And how do you guys overcome any creative blocks? Uh, get a studio dog. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a Jerome has a really sweet, lovely dog, which like for me, it made it an extra joy to come and visit because I got mm. to hang out with this dog. Yeah. But which yeah. kind of dog? Um, she's a Romanian rescue dog, uh, like ex-street dog. Um, wow. So she's like quite a mix of of all sorts of uh, different breeds. And yeah, she she can be quite crazy. But when, when Will's here, she's like pretty, she's, she chills out. And uh, I think she enjoys the creative process as well. She'll like she'll come in and see what we're doing. Um, I guess yeah. <laughs> we we kind of had certain roles. Like you you kind of produced. Mm. You, yeah, you were like the engineer and the producer and handled all the beats, and then, I yeah, I just did some other stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I think like having kind of our own roles um, without like trying to do the same thing like helped with um in terms of working together um yeah if you imagine if we were both tr like really involved in one aspect at the same time I think it would have been more difficult yeah if we were both trying to record and produce it at the same time it would have quickly become a mess yeah and I think also like getting on with the other person like generally is obviously helpful <laughs> Um, nice. Yeah, I can't imagine like collaborating with someone who I didn't really like. Cool. Yeah, that can be hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I f I feel like it helps. I don't know from my experience, collaborating with other people, even who were really close friends. Like maybe our we just had different ideas mm. for what the like end goal yeah. would be, and like that, for yeah. us because it happened so quickly and with such like we didn't intend to write an album we were just making music mm. and that like took any stress out of it really yeah it was all so relaxed yeah it would That's have been a really nice. different experience if we had like set aside some studio time and said like by the end of this we're gonna have an album it's mm. gonna be amazing <laughs> then yeah it would have been very different yeah so the expectation and the pressure wasn't there. And it sounds like, yeah, I think having like clear roles is great. Because if you're doing the same thing, you're going to butt heads. That's, yeah, that's good advice. Mm. We'll take it because we work together <laughs> yeah. a lot. And we get in like a lot of arguments, so. <laughs> well, we are also married, but, you know, it, it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what is one thing you both have been into recently? This could be anything, not just music. Ooh. Uh, uh, I just got be separate, yeah. Um, <laughs> I got a car again a couple of days ago after not having one for a few years. So, got really into listening to music very, very loudly by myself in the car. That's pretty great. Nice. That does sound fun. Yeah. Um, I've been I've been watching a series called uh, Dark. And if you've heard of it, mm. um. It's pretty, pretty trippy, surreal, and um, and dark in like in tone and nature. Um, great music, also. Um, ben Frost doing the soundtrack. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, it's it's pretty weird, <laughs> um, but I'd, I think I'd recommend it if you if you're into that. Um, yeah. It's kind of a time travel kind of vibe, which I'm not normally like into as a concept when it comes to like uh, TV shows and stuff. Um, but this works quite well, I think. Nice. We'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. mm. What about, like, what's one song you think everybody should go and listen to? Oh, man. Uh, tough one. That's tough. Um, I'm really enjoying uh, John Hopkins released a, a new song quite recently. He's, he's gone back to his kind of more 
uh, piano and strings kind of vibe. Nice. Like yeah. stri- stripped down. Um, and it's really beautiful. Let's find, what's it called? That's cool. Oh, it's called Scene Suspended. Yeah. Nice. Cool. I, I can't think of a specific song. I got really back into American football lately mm. just because I've been awesome. <laughs> experimenting with some um, like different guitar tunings myself and of course they use some really interesting ones so yeah just like anything from that first American fo- football album I mm, suppose it's an amazing album mm. yeah that's awesome I have my guitar tuned to like open A or something I'm nice. not much of a guitar player but I like having weird tunings like that because it's like I don't know if it's easier, but for me, it's a little bit more playable. <laughs> yeah, for for me too, to, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I pretty much only use open tunings. Well, and I, everything way to go. always sounds good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can I ask a random question? Sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you guys met from a tour being organized. Um, do you guys have any fun or weird or bad tour stories? Uh, yeah, I've got. A lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite so, one? Uh, we've got time. Yeah, we've, yeah. yeah. Um, I, let me think. So I've like toured quite a lot over the last kind of ten years, and Jerome doesn't really play live, so I guess it's on me to provide. Yeah. I do. I do have one kind of weird story. It was. It's not from that tour, but it's from when I. I went to play one show um, in Estonia for a, a festival. And um, let me try to remember. So we flew to uh, Latvia and then we had like a long, long uh, drive. And for some reason, they only had one CD uh, in the car <laughs> and it was uh, The XX, um, I think their Ooh. first album. Yeah. And it's like, it's cool. It's pretty good. Um, but they just played it over and over and over again for hours, which I thought was strange. But we didn't really say anything because we were like, we're tired from the journey and, you know, it was all like new um, for us. Um, and then we got to our destination, like had a couple of days there, played the show. And then we got picked up um, to go back to the airport. Again, a really, really long drive. Yeah. And uh, so we get in the car. It's really early as well. It's probably about four in the morning. I was so tired. Played the night before. And like, so we get into the car and we start start driving. And then this completely different car, different driver, puts on the exact <laughs> same album. And wow. <laughs> it, just, it just blew our minds. And it was, we thought we were all going insane. Wow. Basically. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It was, it, yeah. I still can't quite understand how that happened that reminds me of something almost so similar like I was playing a festival in Georgia like the country and I had a drive with the guy all the way across the country basically and he had one cd and it was this like techno mix and he played it so loud the whole time (laughs) I ended up sleeping through it but it was like yeah it was so it's awesome you don't know what to say (laughs) no yeah exactly it's like what yeah what do you do (laughs) <laughs> um but i don't know if, if you have anything will that's oh, like too many my brains kind of yeah. fried trying to narrow them down <laughs> yeah, yeah. how also about like to... what's uh if you don't have one what's a notable like, or, like what's the first one that comes to mind yeah <laughs> i want to well, know the, yeah the first one that comes to mind is like the worst show <laughs> i ever played. those are the best perfect, stories perfect. <laughs> yeah okay um well it was the first tour I ever did this was like 2009 and I would have been I was really young I guess I was maybe 20 at the time I think and uh it was a show uh, we were playing it was like with an old project of mine which was all like really quiet ambient instrumental music and we got booked for this really cool festival in the Netherlands and then booked a few shows around it and like the the whole tour was really good, but there was one show we got booked for in Amsterdam, and we turned up, and it was like a really 
grimy like rock club and then they it was in set they expected us to play for something like two hours mm. oh. and <laughs> we were like you know the most we could play for at the time was like 50 minutes and that was like really pushing it and mm-hmm. it was just it was just so horrible and we played I think for half an hour and then the owners just told us to stop <laughs> and um I think that was actually the that was actually the first show of the first tour I'd ever done oh man and wow. I just remember being <laughs> amazingly deflated afterwards thinking like you know, we have this tour ahead of us now. And that was the first show. And I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure if we even got paid in the end. And it was, I guess, a very valuable lesson to make sure you know the place that you're playing really, Mm. really well. Well, it sounds like everything was up from there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it couldn't have gone like down (laughs) any further. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so that's awesome. <laughs> so the song we discussed this week is called Suspended Strings, and it's by Message to Bears and Will Sampson, and that is out now, self-released by you guys. But I wanted to ask, is there anything you'd like to plug separately or, yeah? Uh, uh-huh. I just released the solo record in December, um, so... That seems like a good chance for a plug. Yeah, check that out. That's called Paralanguage. It's beautiful. Nice. Um, I, th- I, I released a solo record a bit before that. I think it's still relevant, but I'll plug that. <laughs> um, it's called uh, Constance. And uh, yeah, so we've both got our own uh, yeah solo albums out, as, long as, as well as our co- collab. Awesome. Well, we will include links to all that. Um, Thank you. But thank you guys so much yeah, for being you. here. Yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure. pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for uh, for having us on. It's been great. Yeah, you're our first international guest, and we're stoked. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, great. Really cool. Awesome. Oh, yeah, lovely chatting to you guys. Awesome. That was such a good conversation with Jerome and Will. That was so cool. And honestly, their song is amazing. I really, really love it. It's so calming. And I really like that that was our first international and duo of people that we've talked to. First double, first international. Thank you guys so much for being yeah, on thank here. you. And thank you for just, I don't know, it's just cool to know that we have people from overseas who are also sending us songs. It's true. Um, so this song comes off of their album Together, which is amazing too i've been actually listening to this this week like in preparation for the show like i've been using it in my morning meditation time and like if you haven't i mean everyone should go listen to that full album right now it's so good well wait till after you're done listening to this episode by right now i mean after this episode (laughs) finishes but yeah it's so good it is so so good so we have a segment called playlist did playlist did yes <laughs> that we come up with a playlist what song before and after this song would you feel like putting it in who wants to go first me okay <laughs> okay so what if we have the same songs that's okay if i'm like i have that song too you can't be like no you didn't you just gonna <laughs> think the song deal deal totally fine i mean okay. there's a lot of songs out there it'd be cool if we had the same one actually so my songs... You have a lot of songs? Now I'm intimidated. There okay. are a lot of songs in the world. <laughs> so if we have the exact same song, that would mean something. True. That we have the same music taste. Okay, so... Maybe. my I love the way this song, like, it's very emotional. It reminds me of a lot of things that I like uh, now, a lot of things I like growing up, I guess. Like, reminds me a little bit of a lot of Icelandic stuff and, like, mm-hmm. calm, atmospheric stuff. So my first song that would be before this song would be by the Icelandic band Moom, be Green Grass of Tunnel. I knew you were going to say that. 
I'll play it right now. And after, that's one of my favorite bands of all time, just by the way, they're so great. I love them too, growing up. I think we had that in common. I actually got to play a show using their drum in Iceland. It was like one of the most crazy experiences of my life. Got to meet some of them <laughs> and hang out. If you guys are listening, you're awesome. So anyway, the song after would be by the album Leaf. Um, and the song would be Another Day. And I'll play a little here. And coincidentally, I read a little bit about Will Sampson and he's actually toured with the album Leaf, so that is cool. I didn't have a chance to ask him about that. But that is a really, really top band for me. Cool. Yeah. Those are so different than mine, so. You had nothing to worry about. Wrong. Okay. You had Metallica. Definitely. And Slipknot, right? Yes. Just kidding. <laughs> I did not have those those two songs, Metallica and Slipknot. Um, so my two songs would be, the first one would be Rhubarb by Aphex Twin, which sounds like this. And my second one would be the winter song by Ara Voss Simone, which sounds like this. Nice. But I also, wait just one second. <laughs> I also have like this weird, it reminds me of um, the radio depth in some weird way. That I know like maybe isn't logical, but it is in my isn't head. Isn't weird. Is it? Is it not weird? No, I feel like the, the keyboard, the like pretty sound bell type of keyboard, it, it makes a lot of sense. I feel like this song gives me like a lot of connections in my head. Like the emotional feeling is there. And maybe it's like a personal thing where I'm like, this even reminds me of Phoenix or something. You know, it's just the like... The band. Yeah, the band. Nice. I love those, both those songs. I mean, I could have picked those, so you were right. But that's awesome. And by the way, these these playlists really don't say anything other than like... They're very personal. The vibes. Like, <laughs> that we would fit this song with. I feel Not like, like just, anything technical. No, it's just a very personal... Like, we may as well be able to say Metallica if we feel it. It just all depends on the vibe that we're feeling. But, yeah, mm -hmm. not that I had to clarify that at all. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why. I, I think that, I know I know what you mean. We're not trying to, like, put your song in a box. Yeah, I know? think that, Anybody's like... Anybody's song when we do this. I think what I meant to say was, like, when we're talking about music, we're not really trying to say we know anything, I guess. <laughs> True. It's really, like, everything's up for interpretation. We're not trying to label anyone, but... But that's why I think playlists from people are so fun. Like, yeah, you know, you get a, you see it a mix CD. Mix tape. Time, you got a mix CD. I don't think I've ever gotten a mixtape. Yeah, I miss mixtapes, mix CDs. I miss that. Did you ever actually get a mixtape? I've never even like seen a mixtape. I've played. I've had cassette tapes, but no. Let's start this back up. Let's like start making mix some things that are like not even physical, but let's make some. Oh, there's. Spotify playlist. It's not the same. Like, you need to be able to draw on it, you know? Yeah, you can't draw on like your you, computer you know screen. What, you know what you need to do? You need to, like, you have can. something that you can draw on with a permanent marker, mess it up, and then just decide to color the whole thing in. Yeah. How you know many I mean? of you out there had a fully Sharpie black CD with just a little <laughs> section? Because you were trying to make something cute, and it just got, yeah, like a section. You're like, no one will know. I wanted half of it to be black. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. No, that's funny. Do you remember those black CDs that were, like, black on the bottom? No. That was cool. I mean, because, like, the PlayStation games were like that. But I remember getting some CDRs. Oh, now that you say that, that definitely doesn't jog my memory. I've never seen that. Yeah, well, real ones, no. Black bottom CDs. That sounds weird, but... <laughs> cool. Um. So, anyway, another thing we like to do 
in the same vein is a segment I like to now call hashtag mood. Hashtag mood. And this is where we talk about a situation, a, a scene that we picture ourselves or just anyone being in while this song is playing. So, do you have one tonight? Well, I just want, so I think you should go. Okay, so this one, this this song makes me feel so much. Like, it so, feels so good. And super, also, it feels like kind of, like last week, a little happy, sad. Like, it's deep, emotionally mm-hmm. It's uplifting. So I picture you're on a beach. It's kind of a cloudy beach. It's kind of like overcast. Not like the typical sunny beach. And you're kind of walking. You feel the breeze. Maybe something intense has happened. Maybe you just went through something. And you're just on the beach. And you just kind of have this moment of like clarity or like like the light at the, the end of the tunnel. And this song, like in the middle section in the second half, it kind of lifts up even more with the strings and stuff. And that's like kind of like that. And this mm-hmm. might kind of be like last week too, but it's like everything's going to be okay feeling. And I feel like that's this song really has that, like it has the emotional realness feeling Definitely. in there, but it's got that everything's going to be okay like feeling too. I totally feel that. I totally feel that. Mine is, this is so like personal to me. It's something that I've never, I've never been to this place or anything, but it would be if I was in like a really, 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 really pretty atrium and, um, wait, is it an atrium of the things with birds? Aviarium. <laughs> oh, wait. atrium's just like a room, isn't it? Av. Honestly, aviary. both though. I mean atrium, but also one with birds. Okay. But without birds. This is, sorry. Anyways, so just like the morning light is coming in. And maybe it's like the feeling after you've cried or something. When everything is just, you know, like before you cry, it's like really emotional. Then after you cry, it's like this really calm, nice place. Mm -hmm. That could possibly be in a room filled with birds or just a big atrium. It's there. I feel like it'd be perfect for just being in there and just like, I don't know, like watching like the air move in the sunlight. Ooh, like I'm picturing like a big arcade. Like if you feel like, like a, in Europe where there's like glass and Yeah, like light. from like the um, the world's fairs and like the industrial revolution mm. and sort of. Or like in Italy and Milan, there's that big. Mm-hmm. I- I'm sure someone out there knows the name of the bird place. <laughs> but that's awesome. Wait, what are, are those called? Av- av- arcade. No, an arcade is like a. It's different. Those are like those are like predate malls. Mhm. It's crazy because they're like from a long time ago, but they also have Pac Man in there. <laughs> yeah. That's why they're called an arcade. It's just like, yeah. It's but very that's, French. <laughs> that's really relatable. Like I feel like everyone knows that feeling of like having a good slash bad cry, but mm-hmm. like the feeling after is like. I wonder if it's, like, chemical, but it's, like, this feeling of, like, relief. Yeah. Relief. It's like, relief. it's gone. And I wonder if anybody else imagines themselves, to like, themselves to be in, like, a big room like I do. With, like, plants and stuff. It's okay to cry. Yes. It, of course. Everyone listening cry right now. Or you don't. But just only kidding. Have, just, I hope you're not crying. Unless you want to. But, yeah. It's an important thing to, to that know. That is... Those are moods. This is our hashtag mood. Yes. Okay, now I remember. It's called an aviary. 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 That's the one. But it could be atrium or aviary. Anyone typing an email to Mariel with that, you can delete it. Yeah, just delete it. it. Don't make fun of me. I'm sorry. (laughs) I was wrong. Aviary. That's a good name for a band. But It, It could be. Speaking of names for bands, once again, this week's song was by Message to Bears. And Will Sampson, amazing, amazing stuff. Go check them out. Go follow them on social media. We're going to put links down below. Oh, wait, this isn't YouTube. We're going to put them on our <laughs> site. <laughs> um, 
And yeah, go check them out and go follow them. That was just like a really fun song and, and con- conversation. conversation. Yeah. I love the story about the the drive with the funny, uh, the music. Uh, I can relate. So it's, I, Yeah, it's very, very relatable. And we just had such a good time. Even after, we're like, that was such a good time. Yeah. So awesome. There is so much to talk about. Yes. We are so excited about everyone who's listening. We're like surprised, I guess is the word, or like just excited that mm-hmm. people are listening to us. Like when we get your responses to our questions, we get so excited. It's kind of crazy. And like everyone who's been sharing stories and just like spreading the word, it means so much to us. Our hearts are very warm thinking of all you guys. So in addition to all of the nice um, comments that you've been giving us and everything. If you are enjoying this podcast, if you could please subscribe and rate just so we can know that you're listening and what that you like it. Just It means so much to us. We really, really, really do appreciate it. Yeah, leave a review on Apple or wherever you can because that really helps us out. We're a new podcast. We're just getting started, but it will really help us out with people searching and all that, and we just want to Spread the word of all these awesome songs. So, yeah. And if you want to talk to us at all, you can tweet at us or, like, comment on Instagram or something. Our, for both of them, our username, handle, whatever you want to call it, is at PlaydatePod. Awesome. So, yeah, just talk to us there. (laughs) This week's question is coming in from Lightwaves, and he asked, How did you and Dream Angel meet? Was it with or without identity hidden? If identity was hidden, was it love at first sight? LOL. Also, how long were you both together before you got married? Thank you, Lightwave. So, let's see. Where do we begin? Where did we begin? What was the first question? Um, well, okay. He asked us, how did we meet? So, we met. We could tell you about this. Yes, we can. We met at a little place called... The Internet. The Internet. More specifically, turntable.fm. That's not really where we met. It's not. Okay. I I would consider that the first place we virtually met. True. And if you're not familiar, Turntable FM was like this internet place (laughs) where you could... I guess you could DJ there, and like it was kind of like a virtual concert. Place. It was like a, was it like social media? I don't really remember. Well, you could chat, and there was like little avatars, but like I was playing like a virtual concert there with Crumb Sparks and George Clanton. It was pretty sick. I it was, was on the last night of it too, wasn't it? I don't know if this was the particularly the I last night. I remember it being the last night in my head, but I could just. I know that it was about to shut down, unfortunately. Which rest in peace, Turntable FM. But it was so cool. There was like, it was an event and you were there. And what was cool is like, you could see yourself visually, like how many people were attending this live event. I'm just remembering all this. You could like see them like bobbing their heads along. It was awesome. It's something that. That sounded really weird, but no. It, no, it was, it was cool. It was something that we need a new version of, maybe like in a new way. But well, we didn't truly meet there. I had, you can tell. Wait, as a viewer of that and not someone who was actually playing music at it, how did, like, the song switch off? I don't even remember. I just remember, like, you just queued up a song and it would play next. But was it, like, every, like, you would go in order? Yeah, it was just, like, Spotify or iTunes. Would it play for the whole song or would it, like... Yeah. And if people really hated it, I think they would skip it. Oh, weird. But... It's kind of scary, actually. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like I got a little extra special, like, privilege because they gave me a little mask and stuff, so I felt really cool. (laughs) (laughs) That is. I wish it was still around, but okay, well, how do we first first initially meet? I'm curious. I interviewed you for a magazine that I did while I was in college. It was about music, right? So you emailed me, asked me some really good questions, and I answered them. Yeah, and then we didn't talk for a while. But then we met at this turntable FM. Honestly, it's a mouthful. That's where we started like talking kind of yeah, oddly. Kind of. <laughs> I think it's a good story. I mean, I have a question that he kind of mentioned like, so when you first knew about me, 
there was no identity or, or face. I mean, how did you, how did you think of me at that point? Well, I didn't really think of you, but then like I figured out who you were. There's no way. Sure. There's no way to find out who I am. Right. Well, honestly, there isn't, but I could. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, you didn't truly fall in love with the mask then. No, you fell I, in love with me. As I've mentioned, I don't really like masks. So. <laughs> that's true. We're kind of like, we're like a special match because you don't even like masks, but somehow you like but me. But somehow they're like all over our house. So it freaks me out just like, a little bit. I'm literally wearing one right now. That's my face. So yeah. Um, <laughs> there's more to the question. How long had we known each other before we got married? Uh, five we, years? <laughs> we don't know for sure. I mean, we're actually pretty bad with dates maybe like 17 tours yeah probably about (laughs) 17 tours time everyone might not know this but you come with me on every single show tour pretty much like if if it's a few you've missed but yeah we're we're definitely a team we travel together we've gone through ups and downs on the road as far as the travel itself which is yeah is like i think it's also how we've become able to get through stuff because yeah, we've like, been like we've even done some really bad tours yeah we've we've gone like if you if you want to like find out if you're really compatible with someone just go travel with them like we said last yeah we might have mentioned this the first week but like yeah it was it was never terrible it was awesome yeah there was some like bad shows or like like delayed flights canceled flights Flights where we had to sit on the plane for eight hours. Or like... We've always been good. Like shows that didn't happen because they didn't turn out to be real in certain countries. True. like Scams. Like the Czech Republic or something like that. You're looking at me like, oh, Getting, I Getting like that. stuck in airports. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... So I think like five years though. Yeah. So that <laughs> that's our short answer to our life together. And like, you know what? If you're out there and you're like feeling like... Should I get married? And yes. It's been five years. Sure. Yes. You don't have it. You can get married at any time, but I yeah. feel like waiting is a good call because then you can really see if you're compatible at airports. Which brings me to a fact. Okay, you've got a secret fact every yeah week I do. Now. <laughs> so apparently, I feel like I literally learned this on TikTok. So who knows? From this person, you know those like facts accounts where you like go by and they're like, "Here's a bunch of facts, and I'm full of facts." Not, I should start one of those. I'm Just not kidding. familiar with that. But. Okay. Well, one person said that, and I'm. this feels true. It takes about four years to fully get to know somebody, and couples who date that long before they get married have a better chance of staying together. Nice. So maybe that's why we're... And that is, like, if you talk. If yeah. You, if you're silent, it doesn't work. Yeah. If you don't talk at all. So yeah, just talk and you'll be good. If you want to ask us a question that we may answer on air, you can become a Slow Magic patron on Patreon. And this uh, Lightwaves, he is one of our Magic VIPs. Shout out to Lightwaves. And also, we want to do a shout out to our other Magic VIPs, starting with... Neil. Anderson Pierce. Static. Lex Gabardine. Hartwood. Matthew Callis. Manny Bautista. And Kayla Smith. You guys are awesome. And also, shout out to all the other patrons. We've been really having a good time in the Discord. We literally, a few nights ago, were, we stopped our TV just to like be in the group chat. It was so much fun. Yeah, we like could not even finish our episode of the show we were watching. Yeah, we were, you had asked everyone to share like a spooky or strange story it got really intense and crazy and awesome and spooky stories are honestly very fun so like yeah just come and join and tell us your spooky story because i want to know them yeah it's been so much fun i literally it was so crazy i spilled coffee all over the couch which actually ended our participation in the conversation (laughs) yeah sorry guys we had to clean the couch but it's been (laughs) it's been so much fun and beyond just being our best friends In real life, in the Discord, I'm putting stuff out on Patreon every couple of weeks, uh, every so often, like new unreleased songs that no one's heard 
or ever been able to download, instrumentals, stems of my songs, video breakdowns, a ton of stuff. It's crazy. I'm even going to do a video breakdown of the theme song of this podcast, which I made. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that I made it, but I guess it was implied. And Yeah, that's why the remixes from other people have come through. Yeah. That's so, why we call it a remix. Yeah, so... If you want to join, go to patreon.com slash slow magic, and it's been so much fun. Thank you, everyone who's our patron. You guys are literally the best. Yes, we appreciate you very much. Thank you for listening to episode three. That's our show. It's been super fun. Thank you to all the play pals out there. Yes, let us know if you like the way that sounds. I like it. Me too. Yeah, like, what's up, play pals? Awesome. You're my play pal. Play pal. Thanks for being here. DJ play pal. How long is this episode? Yeah, can you just let us know in the I comments below? I can't tell how long we've been talking. I don't know. Play date. I don't know the left or my right. Make it great.